welcome back to Bits Be Trippin'. Now in today's episode, we're gonna be going through two Zeus miners. We're gonna take you through the Blizzard and the Thunder, both A6 script miners, how they perform, what their power usage is, and then we'll be looking at those with a little expanded view compared to what I've been doing with just showing you some real nice video of the unit itself and then talking about obviously the power and hash. We're gonna take that through how these performed over a weekend on the coin feather coin now let's not waste any more time this is episode 19 the zeus minor deep dive this is your host carter let's get into this so our buddies over at zoom hash sent these two units over to us one to test and look at and show the world actually what these things physically can do taking them out of the box setting on them on a table and then what's all involved with getting these units to work couple that with a couple different price points here the larger thunder unit which is a thunder x3 roughly 30 mega hash is right around 750 at this point in time. Then you got the smaller Blizzard unit, which is right around $59 for about 1.3 mega hash. We're talking nearly pocket size, extremely affordable, very quiet operation as we can see here at about 57 decibels. And as we've seen in the previous episode here, this unit actually works right out of the gate with the Pimp 1.5.6 software. So you, you can get a Raspberry Pi set up with this with an image and or you can use this on a current GPU rig that you have and leverage that computer as a device that's hosting Pimp and connects to this device and you can have a, a load of these blizzards running against the Pimp software in the ASIC piece. What we found was this unit claims to be around 40 watts of power. We were right around 42 to 46. And I firmly believe if the unit was running at 1.2 mega hash, it would be around 40 watts. But our particular device that we had here was actually running at about 1.34 to 1.4 mega hash consistently, which probably explains that extra six watts of power usage. Now moving on to this Thunder unit. This is the Thunder X3 from Zeus. This is a phenomenal unit. It worked flawlessly the entire time we had this thing. And I'll show the Feather Coin weekend long uh, spread on how consistent both of these units performed here in a second. Now, right after receiving this X3, we had to open it up and put a power supply in it. These units ship without power supplies. As the basic thinking is, you're probably going from a GPU rig over to an ASIC rig, and you can leverage some of that hardware that you have from that GPU rig. I mean, that's pretty much what we did with this unit, putting in a 1200 thermal take power supply that we had on an old 4.6 mega hash 290 rig. Now, the unit did come with the terminals that are required to power the device that actually terminate into the power supply through the PCI Express connection. We essentially plugged that into the back of the thermal tank, took the power supply main 24 pin piece, and then added the jumper essentially from the green and the black wire that you've seen in some of our other videos, and then taped that over to allow the power supply to be controlled from the back on and off switch. Once that was done, we went ahead and put that and slid that power supply in there, kind of tucked all the wires down towards the bottom, and then we had a nice clean fit with the rest of those four ASIC boards that are inside this Thunder X3. After the power supply was on, we went and put the top back on it, screwed it all back down, plugged in the USB connection, and then the power connection. Turned that on and fired her up. Now this key unit came with a Raspberry Pi with a base image to allow the Zeus Miner to function. The actual image, like most of the images that come with the Raspberry Pi, actually broadcast out against an IP on your local router. You go to that very simple setup. Pool information, you can set some settings with regards to the megahertz on the actual unit. Now this unit running at 340 megahertz was actually performing a little over that 30 mega hash. We were getting right around 32 to 31 mega hash out of this particular unit over the entire weekend spread that we were monitoring it on FTC. And with both the Blizzard and the Thunder plugged in from the kilowatt you can see here, right there around 1050, 1075 watts usage. 40 six to 50 of that being the Raspberry Pi plus the Blizzard. So taking that off this unit was right over a thousand watts to the wall using that Tough Power Thermal Take 1200, which is a gold rated power supply. Now, one thing we haven't done in a lot of our episodes when it comes to monitoring the hardware is actually looking how it performs on a pool over a period of time. We'll get a lot of feedback asking, you know, how does this thing actually perform? If I plug this thing in, I actually made the investment to buy this item. What is the thing going to yield to me? So we're going to make an effort here on showing you the Blizzard, the Thunder for both from Zeus. Miner. We had a grid seed blade, five of the five chip GC355 grid seed ASICs, all on this 
pool and we wanted to see how they perform over a period of time and then what kind of yield you're gonna get from those. So we chose WeMine FTC, great bunch of people, been mining on it since December. Very consistent pool, gives a lot of good results and has excellent uptime, no timeouts, nothing like that. In addition to the hash rate on actual FTC, is manageable enough to that we can actually have good success on cracking blocks on it. So as you can see here, our worker setups that we have from the grid seed, the mini, which are the smaller grid seed chips, and then both of the Zeus devices. Now over this weekend of running this, you can see the Thunder found 11 blocks. It's 880 FTC by itself. Then the Blade found four and the Minis found two. The Blizzard unfortunately didn't find anything, but still was contributing to the total hash rate. And while we're on the subject of hash rate, you can see the consistency of these units running. Those Zeus Miner holding right around 39 mega hash between the two Blizzard and the Thunder. And then of course the Grid Seeds offering up with around 5.7 and then respectively 1.2 mega hash with the remaining there. But all of them holding very good consistency. And as you can see this dip here in the middle, that was due to just shutting it off for a little bit, moving it, and then doing the opening it up and taking the, the shots that we've seen just earlier with the inside part. So those two hours, that was the, the timeline of it being down. And then, you know, we plugged it back in, let it run for a little bit longer. But you can see that this thing holds, don't have to reset it. It held all weekend, no issues, and maintain that 30 to 39 mega hash between all those units. Now I want to close on a good shout out to zoomhash.com. They have several of these units in stock. They have a few different variations of them, be it the Thunder and the Thunder X3. Just take a look at the configurations on the page there and then see which one fits your budget and um, one that'll really work for your current setup. Now coming up, we still have that Chicago BTC conference that we need to get out here, hopefully in the next few days. And then we're going to follow that up with an R-Box review deep dive. This is a very low wattage BTC mining device along with a few other surprise goodies that we're going to show you lastly in that episode we're going to cover the mobile wallet deep dive i think you'll all like this one this will cover the new blockchain ios wallet along with a few options that are on android hopefully it'll give you a clear and concise analysis on those and allow you to make a good decision based on some of those features in closing i want to thank all the folks that are subscribing giving us feedback on twitter that really helps and hope that you get this spread out. You know, BBT does this for all of you. Hope you enjoy. We'll catch you later. The bitch be tripping.